Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Tell Us More Live Experience. Still your host, Mo Jack Luhoku, coming to you live, streaming on Facebook, YouTube, and a couple of other platforms. Uh, today is going to be a fun episode. We've got an incredible guest, a woman of so many talents. Uh, we're going to be deep diving into some of her background, the stuff she's done over a very expansive career, and of course, maybe a couple of embarrassing photos along the way. But let's dive into our first story for today. Very interesting. South Africa has gone wild this week. Gone very very wild a little bit of a scandal happening in the miss south africa competition can you believe ladies and gentlemen can you believe one of the contestants bianca we won't say her name surname rather out of respect for whatever she's doing or just not to give into more trouble it's already a bit of a, a nightmare or a disaster i was caught out or called out rather for some tweets from back in the day she was pretty young 14 years old and uh, twitter went into the deep dive and is very upset uh, Bianca has recused herself. What is weird? I just want to let you all know. If you want to say things that are like offensive and bigoted, please keep them off the internet. You're making it easy for the rest of the world. These are conversations you must have with your friends in privacy. I'm not in any way condoning this behavior. I'm just saying the one place you're going to get found out is on Twitter. And things got only worse from there. Uh, she issued an apology, which was a little bit strange. It felt like she was upset for getting caught for the act as opposed to the act itself. It's like, you know, all these videos that have been popping up recently where, where there's a camera with kids and they're like, don't eat the snacks. Don't eat, and there's a timer and they're like, don't eat the snacks for 10 minutes. Then the person eats the snacks, but they're like, ah, I'm very sorry. Not for eating the snacks, obviously. It's for getting caught. It's one of those situations. Uh, but hopefully everybody figures this out and we, it blows over in the next couple of days because we do have much bigger things uh, to concern ourselves about in our next story that's been uh, uh, having everyone talking very interesting the uh, documentary the last dance was playing uh has been going on on espn of course streaming uh, on netflix in south africa and there's been much discussion about who is the greatest of all time the goat as some would say is it michael jordan is it lebron james is it the wonderful uh, late kobe bryant is it shaquille o'neal the truth is it doesn't matter. There's no objective way to figure out who is the best athlete of all time because it all depends on who you like, who is your personal preference. We should do who's our favorite uh, of all time. I'm going to go with Bow Wow as Like Mike uh, and then uh, Wesley Snipes uh, in, uh, in White Man Can't Jump and, of course, uh, Woody Harrelson, who was his co-star in the movie. I'm also going to go with Murs or Mookie from the Spike Lee joints and maybe we'll put Michael Jordan in there. The truth is it doesn't matter. But what I did find interesting about this whole thing is how people have been perceiving rather perceiving Michael Jordan uh, and his legacy over the last couple of weeks. I want to know from you guys, if you are playing a sport or doing anything are you allowed to be an asshole if you get the W, right? Like, that's what we want to know. Is it all worth it if people are out there, right, and making a, a success of themselves, but they happen to exhibit some not so great behavior? Are you okay with that? That's what I want to know from you guys. We want you to chip in and tell us more about how you feel about the Jordan documentary. But of course, I'm not here alone. 
I have a special guest. You're going to love this next person, a TV producer, former presenter, uh, a woman of so many talents, uh, very dope. Please welcome to the show, the wonderful Pippa Chabalala. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. How are you? All right. All right. I forget like how hot you get when you're like uh, trying to make television in like suit jackets and and uh, <laughs> ties made of horrible fabric. I am freezing. My house is really cold, and so I, I'm in quite a thick jersey. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I think you figured it out. I've made a terrible mistake over here. How's the lockdown been treating you so far? Oh, it's been all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have two kids, uh, yep. so we are doing the homeschooling thingy, um, yep. which I am super grateful to my sister for because uh, my sister is a school teacher, and uh, although she lives in Australia, she tutors my children every morning before they have their classes with school. So she basically does their homework. With them. <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> no, it's great. It's great. I, I I kind of hand them off in the morning and be like, go Skype with Stacy and they do the things and I forward them, I forward her their week's worth of work so she knows what they're working on in the week. And then she does sure. covers the same concepts with them uh during the week before their classes. So yeah. And it's been working out so far? I nailed that. <laughs> <laughs> what level are they at? I've got a, a nine-year-old in grade three and okay. a five, almost six-year-old in grade R. You can handle the grade three stuff, Pippa. I'm sure you, you still got that oh, yeah, yeah. I just, But, like, I'm also working, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> everyone's I like, mean... oh, you're yeah, doing arts and crafts and doing this thing. And, like, I see all this stuff on social media people are like oh we did this today i'm like great for you I'm, I'm very happy uh my children played video games yeah and uh watched youtube and nice. uh did go outside and 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 jump on the trampoline and things like that for a little bit and their father has taken to uh basically working out with them every afternoon so they like ride their bikes and then they do like some squats and some jumping jacks and some <laughs> things because i think I think he felt like he was putting on a bit of lockdown weight, and so he wrote yeah. it. He's he was feeling self-conscious. <laughs> He's doing for the children. <laughs> but, I mean, that's interesting. You're talking about your kids gaming. That's where I kind of first heard about you from, was on a TV show called The Verge. Do you remember that show? And, and what was no, it like working on no, The Verge? No, it, it you don't remember at all? No, don't make no, us pull up no, the photos, no, Pippa. No. Don't make us pull up the photos. <laughs> <laughs> you can pull up the photos. It's fine. Uh, yeah, no, so The Verge... Uh, you know, the Verge, I think it's one of those things that, um, you know, I suppose people, it's career defining um, in a lot of ways. Uh, but mm. at the same time, I totally got into it by accident. Um, okay. So <laughs> I got into the world of TV presenting um, really on luck and a fluke. Um, sure. So it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a strange thing. And. Uh, I mean, it ran for four years and it's still, I mean, there's never actually, there hasn't been anything else the same, really. Uh, Quite like even, it, yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's weird because I was talking to my friend Wade and we were saying like, after that show ended, we didn't know what games to buy anymore because nobody was doing like reputable <laughs> reviews. So we've just got like a catalog of really horrible games because your show disappeared. We're not blaming you, but we would like you to issue <laughs> us all an apology if that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> getting an apology from me. There's plenty of like online. This is what the internet is for now, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that show. It was great. Uh, of course, from there you transition and you kind of move to more behind the scenes stuff as a producer. What was kind of like that switch like for you? Yeah, I mean, I was actually doing a lot of the behind the scenes stuff uh, on the verge at the same time. So mm. um, when I first started presenting, I was actually uh, teaching at Vits, and um, yeah. <clears throat> I got into it by accident. It, it totally was a I was teaching a, a honors and master's level in 3D animation and um, and a theory course in, in video games. Um, yeah. And my boss at the time phoned me the one day and said, you know, I've got this producer friend who uh, is looking for a female host for a show on video games. And I thought that, like, you know, you might be a good fit as, like, a part-time gig. Can I give him your name? And I was like... <laughs> Sure, <laughs> why not? It's like, um, and I had to go in and do a screen test, and screen test kind of turned into um, 
into pilots and suddenly yeah. I was producing a show. Um, and when I eventually left Vits, uh, I, I didn't leave related to the show or anything like that. I, I just needed a bit of a change. And so I resigned and sure. the, um, and the producer said to me, well, would you like to come on as a content producer? So I moved into uh, production actually as a content producer on the show. So I was presenting the show, but I was also, <clears throat> scripting and voicing half of the inserts and uh, I wasn't yeah. I wasn't doing as much editing although I could uh, I was doing a lot of after effects and, and that kind of stuff so I kind of had moved into production already um, and then when The Verge ended uh, they, they asked me did I want to stay on and I there wasn't really sure. anything they were working on that I was interested in so I said no I, I, and I resigned uh, yeah. and I uh, again I, I I've always kind of, every time I give these like career talks, I'm always like, oh, well, how did you do this? Whatever. And I'm like, uh, I kind of got into it by accident. <laughs> so Everything's thought, just a fluke. It seems like that's your formula. <laughs> so I do think, I do think a, lot of, a lot of those kinds of things are about uh, being open to opportunity. So <clears throat> I applied for a job at another production house and yeah. the, the, I went for the interview and things. And the guy then phoned me and said, I'd really like to hire you, but it's a bit more of a junior position and you've got too much experience and uh, and I have a master's degree. So he's like, so I can't really afford to pay you what, uh, what <laughs> you're worth. Um, but one of my clients is MTV base and they're looking for a new on-air producer. Can I give them wow. your name? Like, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, I kind of went, yeah, 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 sure. Meanwhile, you're thinking, oh my God, MTV. Like that's just, that's like the dream, you know? Um, that's incredible. And, yeah, and I went for the interview, and I I ended up at at I worked at Viacom for almost eight years. Wow, that's amazing! I mean, you've always been one to collaborate with a bunch of people, which is I think what you do in kind of everything you've done over the years. Yeah. I remember working with you on Splice Magazine. For the people that don't know, what was that about? That and 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 what was the the significance of kind of that phase of, of working on this like online magazine? So. Um, that was that was kind of a passion project um mm. you know we, we obviously with the contacts with the gaming industry and um i mean i have got a lot of uh, photographer friends and people that i've kind of just met over the years <clears throat> and myself and uh, a guy called chris savides who was the art yeah. director of nag magazine at the time new age and, gaming uh, yes uh, new age gaming yeah. or well, they just <laughs> came nag <laughs> <laughs> um, if you, can, you need to find one of those like old new age gaming uh, magazine covers from like before they actually got like a proper art director and things like those are those are, are, you, are you giving away our age now <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, no no i'd seen them <laughs> online uh <laughs> I don't know <laughs> posts <laughs> <laughs> um so myself and chris and uh, and a photographer called tim hume um we basically we kind of wanted to do something that just brought together all the sort of elements of geekdom and art and cool design stuff that we loved. Um, yeah. Chris and I have known each other for a long time and we shared a lot of, uh, you know, things like, I mean, Game of Thrones and <clears throat> video games and all of those sorts of things. Um, sure. So yeah. So we, we just kind of started it. And it's, uh, it, I mean, it was really good. It was a lot of fun. And I mean, we got people like you like to come on and write. And uh, I mean, so we had a lot of like guest writers. I think for everyone, it was kind of a passion, passion project. I yeah. think the reality is that just with all of us working full time and doing that on the side, it just wasn't sustainable to carry on doing it. I think, I mean, I think we ran it for about 18 months though, uh, which is still. That's quite a while. That's quite a decent run though, right? Yeah, it was, it was like six, I think six issues because we issued every like sort of three or four months. I, I can't remember exactly. I had fun. I remember I had to write. The, the, it was a zombie issue. And yes. to be honest, I must be honest, I've never really thought of zombies as a thing. They've always been at the bottom of the things that stress me out. Like a zombie <laughs> apocalypse. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we'll figure that out one day. Best weapons in a zombie apocalypse or, or something like that. What is your best weapon? Can you recall, or do you have one now? If the zombie uh, apocalypse happened, I, I don't. I don't have. I don't have a best one. But I. I. If I look at the way I play uh, video games and like role playing games, I tend to be the person who will like ultimately pick some pick something up and bash people over the head with it. So <laughs> it would probably be like a baseball bat. And I do actually have a um, from from the uh, at Comic Con the one year the uh, Walking Dead guys had like the baseball bats with the, the barbed wire on it. Yeah. So I actually have one of those. So I do have that under my bed. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> I 
<laughs> you really have a baseball bat under your bed? With barbed wire on it, yes, I do. That, that is incredibly frightening. We're not going to get into that. <laughs> but you just brought up Comic-Con. And um, I have a bit of an embarrassing moment that we're not going to talk about. So I thought... What do you, you know, mean? I, I, I'd show... We'd, we'd talk through some other images that maybe... Maybe not as embarrassing, but interesting that we, that we dug up, Pippa. Um, yeah. We're going to go to our first one over here, and, and you're going to tell us a little bit more about what's okay. what's going on in this. Oh, oh, this wonderful <laughs> hairstyle. <laughs> when was this? Tell us about this uh, phase. That was at Rage. Oh, guys, I'd like I did I do all sorts of like weird stuff to my. Actually, this this is like the most. This lockdown here is like the most normal my hair has been in years. Um, so it was actually for a hair show. So this was taken at Rage. Um, okay. Um, the like weird like zebra print hair on the side and things like that. Uh, <laughs> I do um, not not so much anymore. At the time, I used to do a lot of uh, a lot of hair shows for my for my hairdresser, who's um, uh, white hairdressing in in Forty Four Stanley, and they, they she's like she's a really like well known, very awarded hairdresser, and yeah, basically I used to do all of that kind of stuff for her, and I think the sh the hair show was. <laughs> either like the day before Rage or like the day after Rage or something like that. And of course, like hair shows are always those like crazy hairstyles. And yeah, so it is what it is. And uh, there was never any um, <laughs> question about continuity uh, when we were shooting the show because they knew that I was going to change my hair. And yeah. so it wasn't like, you know, a lot of the other shows where they're like, no, you can't touch your hair and you can't do this and you can't do whatever because constantly. the same all the time. And the viewers yeah. didn't know there was none of that. It was just like I would arrive one day with pink hair and they would be like, you've changed your hair. I'm like, yes. They're like, please just don't dye it green because then it'll disappear on the green screen. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, it'll, it'll key into the background. <laughs> so that was That's that was like funny. the only rule, don't dye green. <laughs> um, but, uh, you yeah. know. It's one of those things, man. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't worry me. I'm not like embarrassed about the hair, <laughs> which is kind of upsetting me. I was hoping that you'd be like, "Oh no, yeah, that was a phase no. in my life." Oh no. I mean, we'll bring up the next photo, which I guess is not is be, is not going to work. But anyway, we found another one which we thought was incredibly interesting. Oh, over yeah. here, cover model. Tell us more. What is going on over here? So, um, yeah, this was. Uh, I think. First uh, international tattoo convention they had a, had in Cape Town, mm. um, and yeah, actually I still know the photographer. So he basically the the photographer is a. I told you I know lots of like photographers all over the place. <laughs> so um, he um, he this this actually he had been sent to that particular tattoo convention with this magazine. So yeah. uh, anyone who was doing like I think my my arm was fr that sleeve was fresh there. So it had, they How long had you had that for. Oh, it doesn't have the date on there anyway. <laughs> oh, you want to tattoo without a date? Oh, come on. No, 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 no. I mean, the, on, on, the, on the magazine, dumbass. <laughs> I'm joking. I had no idea. Um, I, had no idea. <laughs> uh, I think it must it, That was before I had kids. So that must be 2005 or six. Oh, five, oh, six? Uh, yeah, two yeah, 2005, 2006. I was doing The Verge already by that stage because of the hair. Um, sure. And I, and, my, and I started my sleeve while I was doing The Verge. So, I, yeah, I mean, no. So, it must, yeah, it must be about maybe 2007, around about there. I'm not sure exactly. But, yeah, somewhere, somewhere around there. Um, okay. But, yeah, I mean, so basically people who – a lot of people who had, like, fresh tattoos and things like that, then they would go – they would ask them to come in and he would photograph the tattoos and the – Whatever and and uh, yeah, I made the cover for that. You became the muse, the the, the, <laughs> the muse of, of the magazine. <laughs> <laughs> I think actually there are later there are later um, issues of later tattoo conventions and that same magazine that I was then in the magazine um, having some other tattoo done. I, I can't remember exactly. That's incredible. And how's the modeling career going now? Are you still are you still involved or have you have you changed lanes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I do I do things from time to time, but uh, I mean it, it was never a it was never a career. It was hey, can I shoot you for a thing? And it's generally related to the tattoos and the and also because I'm pretty like I I, I don't know you've obviously trolled, trolled my social media, so there's yeah. like one with the uh, where we did like a Day of the Dead one with like 
my face was all painted white with like the skull eyes and things like that. And that was just like something fun because we were like, hey, this would be a cool shoot. So that's dope. I, that's a cool vibe. I mean, I've also got some ink. What inspired you to get your first few tattoos? And like, what was the what was the reasoning behind, uh, particularly this sleeve? Um. So this, uh, I got my first one. Geez, like when I was at varsity, uh, and it was a small piece of flash, like nothing. Um, and by the, you know, like one of those, like, <laughs> hey, I want to get a tattoo, and you walk in and you pick something off a wall. I mean, it's not, you know, nothing meaningful behind it or anything. <laughs> <laughs> um that actually this this steve um so the whole theme is uh is love um mm. and the i don't you can't see it on that picture but like there's a there's poetry written on there um and it was it's the poem that was read at mine and my husband's wedding so it's uh uh sonnet Aww. 15 if i remember correctly uh, pablo neruda mm. So in English, it's it's written in the original Spanish, but the the English uh, line is "I love you as certain dark things are loved secretly between the shadow and the soul." Wow, that's incredibly beautiful. That's like I can't even make fun of that. I was hoping you had like a Chinese <laughs> symbol at the bottom. I'm sorry, like... I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm I'm uh, I'm destroying your <laughs> your heart <laughs> trying to mock me. I'm, I'm, this I'm is gonna... yeah, this is falling apart really quickly. Thank you, Pippa, not being helpful <laughs> at all. You made, you've made great decisions your whole life. This is some bullshit. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's cool, man. I mean, um, you have moved now. You were talking about you at Viacom. You've moved into a new position, which is at Walt Disney. Can you talk about it? What are you What are you doing now at this wonderful uh, uh, organization? I, I am the creative services manager. So my oh. my my full title is the on air and creative services manager. That's <laughs> That's basically what I do. I so I, I still do much the same thing that that I did at, at Viacom. Um, mm. Basically, I, I I run the promo department, so we make promos. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds dope, though. It's fun. I mean, it's it's it's. I remember having a ton of fun at the Viacom offices. Um, you guys, it was a different office, like you know, from what I was anticipating. Very, very lots of fun happening. Uh, some events on Friday afternoons. Um, do you think it's important <laughs> to know. live in like kind of a loose workspace? Because I know a lot of companies are quite rigid in how they operate. Um, you know, I think I think most media companies or production houses and things like that are a little bit more flexible and <clears throat> and a little bit more um, open. Um, mm -hmm. And also, I mean, I, th I think also the way the way we work in general is is evolving a lot. Like, and and I'm not just talking after Corona and and all of that <laughs> stuff. Like. <laughs> like, well, I mean, that's a whole other ball game. I don't know where that's, where that's going. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but in general, I mean, I, I find media companies are a lot more um, flexible um, and and quite and and quite open to people's personalities. I, I mean, I do remember um, going for my interview at, at Viacom. <laughs> And uh, it, it, it's a very long story because it was rescheduled multiple times and there was all sorts of things sure. going on. And I ended up having my interview in uh, the garden of a boutique hotel in London. Um, okay. <laughs> while, the, while the creative manager at the time was having <laughs> like a, a brainstorm with other people who were then in another room in, inside the hotel. And then he and the other manager went outside and they interviewed me sitting in the garden. Wow. And, you know, I mean, it, partly it was winter, but also because... I was at an interview. I was wearing a jacket because um, you know I do dress up from time to time, yeah. um, and um, and I finished the interview and I kind of say, um, so I, I mean I don't think it'll be a problem, but I just wanted to like check because uh, this is a corporate. Um, yeah, I, I I do have quite a lot of tattoos, <laughs> and they kind of went. What? I said, I just want to, like, do I, do I have to cover them? Or, and they went, no. <laughs> like, they just kept it moving. They weren't bothered. No, and they kind of went, oh, leak, our head of legal has full sleeves. Don't worry about it. And I said, great, oh. cool. Uh, we could, like, we could. So I would just arrive with more tattoos, uh, you know, and I'm, I think that that's always just kind of been the way. My, my argument is that, if you don't want to hire me because of my tattoos, well, then I probably don't want to work there anyway. <laughs> it's Then it's mutual. If they don't want you, you don't want them. Exactly. That sounds wicked. You just remind me of a story of, um, I once did stand-up comedy at a Viacom year-end function. What yes. a horror show. Oh, my <laughs> God. Oh, my word. I could not believe. I felt like I'd been set up. 
it was such a disaster. I think like Maria <laughs> McCloy was still there at the time. It was kind of oh. like, I don't know, like five, six years ago, like at a farm somewhere or something. Nomuzi was still there. Um, that it must, was the super. That, that, that's like, it was like one of our off sites. There must have been an off site. Oh, what a horror show. I, <laughs> as I did the show, I was like, you guys are the fucking worst. All of you <laughs> as a group. I never want to see any of you again. And, and then I ended up working there for two years. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. I mean, it's always, it's always like, it stresses me out. We were talking earlier about um, you emceeing gigs and doing functions. Do you still do that kind of work? And, and don't you hate it when they read the weird bio for you? Yeah, I mean, so I I haven't I haven't done um, a few in a while. I, it's been a it's been a very tumultuous year, so I've kind of sure. I kind of hopped off the map for a little bit. Mm. Uh, but yeah, so it is. It's always weird because like they always like focus on this like weird stuff, and then I, like I hate it when people like ask me for bios. So like they'll sure. sort of ask to speak at an event, and they're like, oh, and please just like send us a bio, and you kind of go, cool. Um, <laughs> You almost want to say, I'd really rather you just kind of like look online and write something because like I feel really wanky like sending you a sending them the bio. Blah, 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 <laughs> and I, feel like, I just feel like a bit of an asshole. <laughs> it's okay. They, you must just give them what they want. That's exactly what they want, though. Yeah, no, I know. So I, I tend to when I when I have to write them, I tend to focus on the like like the fancy stuff. So like the like the TEDx talk and the like I, the BCX disrupt, like those kinds of the, the stuff that like sounds very like, oh, like look how important I am. Um, even though I'm actually feeling like a bit, oh, this is a bit cringy. <laughs> you don't like that kind of them reading it out while you're waiting to go on? It just, it, it just, it makes me feel a bit, a bit weird. Like I, I think it also, it just, I think I don't think of myself like that. So like, as you know, when you're saying a lot of it is luck or fluke, sure. it's like, I've done a lot of stuff, but you don't really anticipate that it's going to end up like that. Like, or, or that people will see you in a certain way. Um, I, I, maybe it's because I never particularly aim to like go into show business. Um, but you know what I mean? Like I, I never, yeah, I I, that was never <laughs> my, if I look at like if you look at like like what I studied and things like that, none of that is even remotely related to being in television. So it's... well, you, you studied fine arts, didn't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so what my, was the plan when you, when you were doing fine arts? Kind of what was the plan? What was the end goal at that time in your life? Uh, I wanted to make video games. That was pretty much that. Yeah. So like since I, since I was about ten, um, mm. I, I, that's kind of what I wanted to do. I wanted to make video games. Yeah, and then I went and did fine arts. Uh, there was no game design courses or anything at the time because I'm old. Um, and, um, <laughs> no comment. And, <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I went and did fine arts, and then I did a uh, like a college course in 3D animation. Yeah, and um, then I went and did my masters in 3D animation at Wits, and. Um, while I was doing my master's, I interned at what at the time was South Africa's only gaming company, a company called I Imagine. Oh, and, um, and I was there for, I mean, my entire internship was a month. It was like a holiday internship. Sure. Uh, and, and I was there for three days. And I came home and said to my boyfriend, who is now my husband, mm. uh, yeah, no, I don't want to do that. And he said, <laughs> <laughs> what? Three days? Uh, what? Now, now, bearing in mind, he's known me since I was 12. So sure. he kind of went, what? And I said, <laughs> I don't want to do that. He's like, as long as I've known you, this has been what you wanted to do. This is what you've studied towards. And I was like, mm, I think I like the idea of doing it more than actually doing it. And he sort oh, of wow. said, uh, <laughs> okay. What was it about the experience that changed your mind, though, that like, made you decide maybe this isn't for me um so i i have a lot of i have a lot of friends in the animation industry and they are mm. very passionate about what they do and and that's great for them um but the hours are really long uh -huh. um and and not and not that i have a problem with long hours but the way this the way that the industry and I and I do get the sense from international as well, but like the way the industry is set up is that um, you basically like the guys they were working seven till seven, and that was like their average work day. I mean, I could go in at eight and leave at five because that was my work day. 
Um, <clears throat> but that wasn't like that. And that was just, they weren't in crunch time. They weren't doing anything, working yeah. on the, or working on like pilots and, and pitches and things like that. And I was like, this is not, this is not what not I want. Me. No. And I, and like, you know, at the time I knew I at like at some point I wanted to have kids and I was like, I don't want to be that parent that's like, oh, well, I'm home late and like now my kids are in bed already and I've missed sure. all of that. And I just, I didn't want that. Um, I didn't know what else I was going to do, uh, but I was like, okay, well, we'll find something else. Uh, and then we'll I, make a plan. I, and then I got into lecturing by accident. So, I mean, you know, it's... There, well, that is the that is the path. Uncertainty, the accident happens, and it all works out. I like it. It's a great formula for... I'm going to try that. <laughs> like, just hope things... <laughs> hope should hope. Happen. Yeah. <laughs> I just, like, this is me for, like, the next five to ten years. Just like, <laughs> I hope this works out. But, but I mean, you, you, just like, you know, <laughs> just be fluke. <laughs> yeah. You brought up a contentious <laughs> issue, though, which is... Which, on, like, my... Like, oh, it might work out. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is not. You don't encourage this. <laughs> not. I, I think that everyone should choose their own path. Okay, we'll try that too. I uh, I wanted to go back to what you just brought up. Gaming crunch is a big thing, particularly with like AAA studios. What do you think of like this idea of like these crazy deadlines that gaming studios set up for the, all their employees and, and, you know, those work hours that they do have to put in to finish a game on time and, and avoid delays and that, and that kind of work environment? You know, I mean, uh, is it the gaming studios or is it the publishers? Because I mean, like, I think that I think that a lot of those kinds of things will, will end up working as as kind of like a vicious cycle. You know, like you, sure. you, the the publishers, the the game developers work on something, and then they put in all these hours and they do all of the stuff, and then the publishers like, cool, but we need to hit this deadline because it's just before Christmas, or there's a lull here, and there's only big game, and then we retime this, and then we're going to bring the thing forward, and then we're actually, oh no, there's a delay, and now we're going to move it back. And people yeah. just kind of have to adjust. Um, and I see, I mean, you see the same thing in television that, you know, all these people who make like unrealistic uh, promises around like when a show is going to TX or <clears throat> when it's going, when something is going to go live and yeah. their sponsors, their sponsors are like, well, we need to hit this like financial, you know, deadline and things. So it's difficult. Um, I think that's, Awful it's okay. it is. No, 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 no. I think that also is like uh, Corona to a certain extent has mm. forced people to reevaluate. And if yeah. you look at like all the games that have been pushed back, because the reality is that people can't carry on working like that under those conditions when half of them are at home <clears throat> or they're sick or nothing yeah. is functional. You know, people have to reevaluate those things and have to reevaluate. As my, as my as my best friend would say, life choices, babe, life choices. So <laughs> people have to reevaluate their life choices and go, is this how I want how I want this to play out? And I, yeah, yeah, I do, I do I do hope that that in a time of crisis that like business businesses do look at those things and go, actually we need to look after the, the people that work for us and 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 ultimately if we do the product will be better yeah. because. People are more invested. That's an. I think that is one of the positive. Yeah, the, one of the positives that could come out of this is just like kind of reassessing how we, like you say, work and operate, and who benefits from kind of this work structures that you have. Um, but you know, like you said, I, I think it is important to to kind of focus on the positives, which is difficult at this time. If there's a game now that you would encourage somebody to play to to get their head out of whatever's happening at the moment, what are like your five top five escapist games you, you would recommend to people out there to get them out of their little? Um, oh, that's the what? worst. Oh, because of it, it's like people ask me what my favorite game is. I'm like, oh, please don't ask me. I don't know. It's like my favorite game at the moment. <laughs> okay, I'll do this. Okay, I'll tell you this, right? I've recently played uh, Ori and the Blind Forest and Ori and the yeah. Will of the Wisps, and I do yeah. not like mess with platformers, but holy shit, I am very much on board. Those are absolutely amazing games. You know, yeah. I, I interestingly, I um, I mean, I follow a lot of game developers on on Twitter and things like that, and there's a, a guy called uh, David Goldfarb who's <clears throat> worked on Battlefield and and all sorts of things. Yeah, um, and he was commenting on something the other day that he was saying does anyone find that they are like 
re-watching series that they've seen before or rereading books that they've read before. And uh, I was like, for me, that that is totally the case. I don't want to watch yeah. stuff. I don't want to um, play, like be like, oh, I haven't played this game. I need to, I actually, I'm, I'm looking for comfort and familiarity right now because yeah. everything is so stressful. I don't need the stress of now like, <laughs> like a mechanic of a new game and like I'm just like no 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 I am replaying Dragon Age The Witcher Wow like, Dragon Age well like Inquisition which is like 2014 so like a six year old game I'm replaying wow, like wow that's still that's kind of <laughs> no sure sure absolutely um I'm like been watching old seasons of CSI. I mean, like, what the hell? Like, and and my and my like my friend said to me, she's like, but of course you are. She's like, because you know what's gonna happen. Like, <laughs> you don't you need certainty. I can just like watch it and be like, oh, somebody's gonna die. They're gonna figure out who did it. <laughs> oh <my goodness. laughs> um, and and so I mean, from 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 that perspective, I I get it. I I. Recently, rebought um, the Grand Theft Auto Five on PlayStation, and I'm replaying GTA. I'm, I'm replaying GTA. I'm replaying The Witcher. I'm replaying Dragon yeah. Age. Oh, The um, Witcher is good. The Witcher is good. Oh, good. It's so and it, like it's, this is like the, like third time I've played it. Um, you know, and I, I did I did about a year ago try and like replay the first one. I, I can't. I, oh, that not, that seems too. That's too. Like I tried with the Uncharted games to go all the way back, and I was like, I can't play this blocky whatever this is. This. So for me, it's, for me, it's not about the visuals. Like the visuals actually have have never worried me. It's uh, like just the, the gameplay. The yeah. The gameplay for the first Witcher is just the combat is awful. Like I just I can't. It's, <laughs> I like I I did like care more in and then was like no 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 it's fine don't need don't I've need to enough. <laughs> <I've seen> enough. <laughs> but uh, I think you just made me think of Diablo three that's always when I go back to yeah and and it's a good game I mean this this is exactly the thing is that I I mean I I this was a while ago I went through a bit of a sort of like retro game phase um, mm. about a year ago and I I started like replaying like Neverwinter Nights two I mean like that it is old there's a really old game um yeah. but but the narrative is still really good um and uh and it's the same like with the elder scrolls so so uh i mean i'm, I'm not talking about the elder scrolls online i'm talking about like the single player games skyrim yeah yeah so skyrim um oblivion uh, one of the first so i never played like the first couple because that it, it, it is a little bit before like it came out while i like sure. yeah well, when I was born, I mean, but like I was before. I was <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense why you haven't played it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like the first one I played was Morrowind. And Morrowind actually is still one of the, narratively, is still one of the best. Like it's just the, the story is really good and the expansions are great. And like I just, again, I just can't play it now because there's no fast travel. And I'm like, if I have to walk, from one end of the world to the other, I'd like and be attacked by things that are way above my like level. I, no, I, I can't. It's exhausting. <laughs> what, what was that game that um oh man the dude who made the Metal Gear stuff? Uh, what's it? Hido, um, Hideo Kojima. Yes, he made Kojima. Training. Have you played that? I have not. I have not played it. Um, it's it's one of those that that uh, I just I never got around to it, and I I wanted to, but you know like. I just didn't get there, uh, but yes, the the walking. I I've heard I've the walking seen simulator. I've read all the reviews, and my friends are like, "Oh my god!" I'm like, "Okay, cool." <laughs> that reminds me, I won't play it, but but yeah, but but I believe it is very good. I but I ha I haven't actually played it. Yeah, those are some games for those of you who are watching. You could try out. Let us know what you think. Uh, Diablo, we heard Dragon Age Inquisition. Uh, what else was on your list there, Pepper? That you've been going back to. The Witcher the people. Three. The yeah. Witcher Three, check that out. I saw Witcher like is five now, so like a couple of days ago it turned five, and it is on like massive, massive, massive sale on like all of the stores. Doesn't matter what platform you're on, so that's that's a good opportunity to buy it. For sure, there you go. Go check those games out. Uh, Pippa, thank you so much for joining us. You've been a fantastic guest. Uh, we're sending you and your family lots and lots of love, and we will chat very soon. Awesome.
Ciao, Romano. Thank you guys for tuning in. Another episode of the Tell Us More Live Experience. Uh, please let us know what you think of the games we mentioned earlier. Let us know in the comments. Thank you for tuning in. Tell a friend. And we'll see you guys next week with another special guest. Okay, thanks. Bye. Brrr.